Okay. Sorry about this. All right. We are recording. Um, well, no, we're not, are we? Let's see if we can get these to communicate. There we go. Did it do this last time? Come up pink first. Obviously, a pen. It's in the wire. Huh. Okay. If I have to get Christian to come up here and hold this, up. no. Ah, uh, huh. this is obnoxious. This side. Oh, let's see. It was pinching the wire. The electrons couldn't get through. Now it seems to be here. Right there. <laughs> it works right there. Anyone got a long piece of scotch tape? <laughs> this is this is totally ridiculous. I've asked them for another cable and no one can find me one. It's, it's somewhere right in here. Because this is securely in. Okay, let me try this. Take some of the tension off. Or maybe add more tension to it. <laughs> to keep it right there. How about this? All right. The worst laid plans of mice and men. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Took too long for that to come up. Um, for people at home that didn't know what in the world was happening, the projector was flashing pink and white, pink and white, and I finally managed a way to get it to stay white. Okay. Any questions on anything we've done so far? I see lots of activity on the quizzes. That's good to see. Uh, you've got a little while to get those in, uh, soon as you can, sooner you get them in, you can see what you might have missed on that. So you can, I, you know, I can give you feedback, but if you wait till that day, right before the test to turn them in, you don't get any feedback at all. So please get them in sooner rather than later. All right. No questions. Okay. We left off last time in chapter one, still functions in the graph and 1.8. It's combinations of functions and then also composite functions. We'll start with the combination of functions. We talked about these last time. We looked at what are the four basic combinations of functions. Really easy. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Okay? Now, what we talked just a little bit about when we were doing those samples is division. But really, all of them, you have to be concerned with the domain of the arithmetic combination of functions. The ones they gave as examples were polynomial functions that were defined everywhere. So that's why we didn't really bother about them then. But now we do. The domain of arithmetic combination of functions, f and g, consists of all real numbers common to the domains of f and g. Let's just say that f was defined from negative infinity to positive 7. But g was defined from 0 to 85. Okay? The arithmetic combination could only go from 0 to 7. Because that part, g wasn't defined, this part, f wasn't defined. So you have to have that portion which is common to both. If you think in terms of Venn diagrams, the intersection of the two domains. Okay? In case of the quotient function, you have a further restriction that that denominator g of x cannot be zero. So not only would you have the commonality being a constraint, but then you also could not allow any x's, even if it's in that common part, to be that would make the g equal zero. Okay? okay. Got it. 
All right, good deal. Anyone else come in since I called roll? Okay. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about those uh, issues. So, for the sum, difference, product, and quotients of functions, let f and g be two functions that do have some overlapping domain. If they don't have any overlapping domain, Guess what? You can't add them, you can't subtract them, you can't multiply them, you can't divide them. If their domains do not overlap, you cannot deal with them, okay? So let's say we have two that do have overlapping domains. Then for all the x's common to both domains, the sum, difference, and product, and quotients of f and g are defined as follows. And it's pretty straightforward, okay? The sum function is so the f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x. Just, I hope, like you would expect. The difference function, f minus g of x, would be f of x minus g of x. Just like you would expect. The product function, f g of x, f of x times g of x. And the quotient function, f divided by g of x, would be f of x divided by g of x. As long as the, none of the x values would make that g equal to zero. You have to exclude any x values that made g equal to zero. Okay beyond any other exclusions you might have. Now, so what? What does this mean? Well, sometimes it might be easier to compute the sum function than to add the, to compute each of the functions than to add them together. Sometimes it's easier to subtract the two functions and then you know what the difference function is. So it gives you two ways to evaluate any of these functions these combinations of functions. All right, here's example one. And here's, actually, all right, good deal. All right. Given that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 1, find the sum function. Before we begin, where is f defined? What's its domain? All real numbers. How about g? All real numbers. They're both polynomial functions defined everywhere. So we don't have any problem with the domain. Everything's common. So what we want to find is f plus g of x. Well, what in the world, let me get my pen activated, what in the world is f plus g of x. How do we define that from the previous slide? Pretty simple. Straightforward. What is it? It's f of x plus g of x. Okay? Now, what is f of x? 2x plus 1. What's g of x? x squared plus 2x. I can't write well. Minus 1. Now, hint, okay? If it helps you to see how to do this better, put your f of x in parentheses and the g of x in parentheses, okay? If that helps you see what you're doing, do it. The book tends to do that. However, with nothing in front of the f of x, like no sign, no, no number, or anything else, it doesn't contribute anything to have a parenthesis there. And when you have a plus sign, it doesn't contribute anything to have a parenthesis. If you have plus 7 times g of x, then, yeah, you have to multiply 7 times everything there. We're not doing that, okay? Um, or if that was a minus, and we'll see that in just a minute, what we have to do. So for, in this case, parentheses don't add anything, so why write them? But if it helps you see it, write it. I mean, do whatever helps you understand it the best. Okay? So what do we do with this then? Combine like terms. What like terms do you see? X squared, X squared has no other term, so we'll just write that down. Plus 4x. Done. There is your sum function. You get your name, please. Three, I got it. Okay, 
Watch your name, but find him with the other issue. There you are. Anyone else come in since the call roll? Okay. There is your sum function. We've done the first part. Okay. Excuse me. Any questions on the first part? Second part, then evaluate the sum when f, when x is equal to 3. So what we're looking for is f plus g evaluated at 3. Well, let's see. Let me change this slightly. This is evaluated at x. Okay, what we want to do is f plus g evaluated at 3. And how do we do that? Plug it in, plug it in. And what does that give you? Say again? Okay. It would be 3 squared. Help me, help me. Excuse me. Plus 4 times 3. And that would be? That would be? That would be? 9 plus 12 equal? 21. All right. All right. Oops. Okay. So, pretty easy to evaluate once you had the sum function. It wasn't bad if you want to evaluate originally. Let's do f of 3. What would that be? f of 3. Say again? Okay. f of 3. I couldn't hear. You probably said the right answer. I just can't hear. L for 3. 2 times 3 plus 1 is? 7. Okay. G of 3. Which is? Second. 14. 3 squared is 9 plus 6 is 15 minus 1 is 14. And 7 plus 14 is? Ta da! 21. Get your name for time. Huh? Okay, I got, got it. Thank you. Okay. All right, good deal. Anyone else come in? Oops, one more. JT did. Okay, it's flickering again, isn't it? Okay, I think when I jiggle the stamp, it flips. So you see, you can evaluate it either way. Plug and chug or chug and plug. It doesn't matter. Put it, you know, evaluate the sum function, then fill it in, or evaluate the functions, then add them together. Either one. Let's see how they did it. I think I know, but let's see anyway. All right. The sum of f plus g of x is given as f of x plus g of x, just like we said. And they like to put them in parentheses, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. 2x plus 1 plus x squared. All right. Any other second day of I remember a couple weeks ago that my registration never was completed or something, so I went around in the class. And then they called me yesterday and said that they that something was wrong. I was like, okay. I, they, I had a scholarship that was supposed to yeah. take care of everything that never went through. Yeah. And then they called me yesterday morning, so I've missed like okay. two weeks of everything. Yeah. Uh, frankly, in my class, always come. Okay. No matter what they say, if you think you're going to continue in the class, come. Yes, I'd rather you have you, but it's all recorded too. Oh. Uh, glad you're back. That's Tyler, right? Okay. And well, it's going to be easier doing this way. Ryan, right? Okay. Okay. Has anyone else come in since the call roll? I ended up being a pretty good attendance today. Good deal. Okay, so they got it to this point, in parentheses, red. Let's see what they do next. Huh. They just combine like terms without showing you removing parentheses or anything else. 
x squared plus 4x, and then the ones add to 0. So now when x is equal to 3, evaluate the sum. f plus g of 3 is 3 squared plus 4 times 3, and here's the math. Okay. Ron is here. Okay, anyone else come in? Oh, well. Oops, one more. Reggie's here. Okay, anyone else come in since I looked up last? Okay. All right. And so we got 3 squared plus 4 times 3. And as we found out, they discovered that was indeed 21. Any questions? All right. That was example one. They skip two, they skip three, they skip four before we get to a composition of functions. So let's go back and do example two. They do the easy one and then they sort of skip and let you figure out the, the harder ones. So let's do given f of x. Yes, save me some writing here, folks. Uh, All right, it's the same problem, okay? Given f of x is 2x plus 1, g of x is x squared, okay, is x squared plus 2x minus 1, find this time f minus g of x. How do you reckon we're going to do that? Same way, but tell me how. 2x plus 1. When it starts out that way, there's no reason to put a parenthesis. And then, minus what? Put a parenthesis in here. Okay? You've got to put a parenthesis around the g of x, and I'll show you why in a second. x squared plus 2x minus 1. Well, you don't got to, but I'll, I'll explain how you could avoid it. But that's what we do. With the minus sign there, that means you're going to be changing sides inside the parentheses. Yes? Okay. That was example one. I'm doing example two now. And the example two is the same setup. It's F minus G. Okay? Yeah. All right. So you tell me what to do next. 2x plus 1, that doesn't change, minus x squared, minus 2x, plus 1, excellent. And then we combine like terms here, and what do we have? Negative x squared, plus 2, because the 2x has now disappeared. It won't always happen, folks, just these problems that happen to, to do that way. Okay? So... Okay. Um, when you're doing, okay, I left off one step. Let me go back and write that. Y'all told me what to do and I left it off. Okay. F minus G of X is defined to be F of X minus G of X. Does that make it a little clearer? Okay. That's how F minus G is defined. F of X minus G of X. What is F of X? 2x plus 1. Now, if you wanted to, you could put that one in parentheses, too. It's not going to contribute anything, but you could. Then you put your minus sign. Then you put g of x. This one is important to put in parentheses because the minus in front, the subtraction, is going to change the signs of every term in there. So that's why I say it's a good idea to put, put, put the parentheses there. On the previous one, when it was an addition, it didn't matter. You didn't need to put parentheses. Okay, so the next step, you got that from then on? Any other questions? Or you want to? Okay. All right, any other questions? Good question, by the way. Okay. Now, where do we go from there? Oh, let's see what the rest of the problem is. Then evaluate the difference when x is equal to 2. So this is your difference function, f minus g of x, and they're asking for what is that when x is equal to 2. And you tell me. Help me. 
negative what? Negative 2 squared plus 2. And what is that? Okay. Okay. Remember you do, please excuse exponent before you do subtraction. So that's going to be minus 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. Okay. Let's see how they did. Oh, they got it right. Good for them. All right. Do you see why? When you have minus x squared. Now, if that minus x was in parentheses, you keep that together and you square it. Someone's breathing too hard. Okay. All right. All right. Any uh, questions on that? Okay. Let's move on to example three. And unfortunately, here they changed the problem on us. So we'll erase everything. No more questions? Okay. Okay, example three. Whoa! Being weird today. Okay. Given that f of x is equal to x squared and g of x is equal to x minus 3. Well, I don't need the parentheses. They didn't have it. Okay. Well, I've lost it. Oh, and by the way, I meant to say, every one of these examples has a checkpoint right after it. And if that's a good thing to do, as soon as you get out of class and don't have another class, have a little bit of time, go back and do the checkpoints. And that way you reinforce what we've just done in class. And if you have problems with it, you can go to LarsonPreCalculus.com free website, no access code required, and see how they work it out. Audio, video, I think, yeah, solution of those problems. Okay, so what I was going to do here, since they didn't put a parenthesis, I won't either. Okay. G of X was X minus 3, and they're asking us to figure out what FG of X is. And what would you guess it would be? again. Okay, it's f of x times g of x. And what's f of x? x squared times x minus 3. I knew I was going to put a parenthesis, and that's what I wanted to. And what does that give you? x cubed minus 3 x squared. Very good. Now, the next thing to do, then evaluate this product when x is equal to 4. So this is your fg of x. So do fg of 4. <coughs> what would that be? Help me, help me. Yes, and what does that give you? 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared. Okay? Anyone know what 4 cubed is? 64. Minus, anyone know what 4 squared is? 16 times negative 3 would be, or times 3 would be? Oh, I hear the gears grinding. Yeah, what else? 48. Perfect. Okay? And what does that give you? 16. Okay? Now, <laughs> all right, this is really getting on my nerves. Got to get a new cord for this room. Okay, let me try something else now. Ooh, that's even worse. Okay. Okay, Christian, get up here. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. There we go. Let's try that. It's going to be hard to write, but let's try it. All right, what I meant to do on the last one when we did the subtraction, remember we had already evaluated what f of x was at 
Oh, no, that was x equal 3. So we'll don't go back and do that. Okay, any questions on example 3? Say again? Don't erase it, okay. Got it? Everybody? Still writing? Yes. How did I get what? X squared times. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Multiply X squared times X is X squared. Now, notice that you didn't have any problems here when it was minus 3, 4 squared. You didn't try to multiply those and then square it. But if it was just a minus sign there without the parentheses, you would want to put the minus 4 and then square. So remember, whether there's a number there or not, you always do the exponent before you do the multiplication. Or subtraction. What's your name, please? Trace. Trace, got it. There you are. All right. Anyone else come in since the call drop? Okay. So there we have our multiplication problem. Let's move on to example four. Like I said, we'll get out of here. Okay. This is hard to write here because I keep touching the thing here. Whoops. Back up one. Okay. Now we're wanting to find F. I can't write. Okay, what we're wanting to find is f divided by g of x and g divided by f of x, okay? For these functions, when f of x is equal to the square root of x and g of x, yuck g of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. Not particularly easy writing here. Okay. Now, probably the best thing to do here, and the other functions have all been what kind? Up till now? Polynomial functions defined everywhere. Now they, they throw in a square root function. Is that defined everywhere? Where is it not defined? What's negative? Whenever what's in the house is negative. So the first one, the f of x is defined when? x, how do we write in math speak, is greater than or equal to zero. That's how we say not negative, okay? It's greater than or equal to zero. But in the other house, what can, do we have to say there? Okay, 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to zero. Whatever is inside the house has to be, can't be negative. has to be greater than or equal to zero. Make sense? We got some work to do on that one because it's sort of all tangled up there, okay? So how do we know what x can be? If you can look at it and tell, that's perfectly fine. Can any of you do that? Say again? Okay, all positive real numbers, so I'll take one. x equal 3. 3 squared is? Oh, 9, and 4 minus 9 is negative. So that won't work. The thing that's in there has to be positive real numbers. So 4 minus x squared has to be greater than 0. How do we solve that inequality for x? There's a couple of ways. You tell me how you want to do it. Okay, can I get your name, please? Huh. Lexus, I got it, got it, got it. My hearing's so bad. Okay. No, it isn't fine. I just can't hear. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Enough of that. Okay. 
How do we solve for X? How do we solve that inequality? Anybody? Second? Okay, well, it's already greater than or equal to zero, so you treat that the same. How do you solve it? Okay, I know it's hard to see. It's 4 minus x squared greater than or equal to zero. Yes? Ah, that's one way to do it. We're going to add x squared to both sides. Okay. Now, that's going to wipe out our x squareds here and put you an x squared over there. Now, do you like having the x squared on the uh, left or right? Does it matter to you? Doesn't matter to you. Shucks. I was, huh? Huh? You like it, like it on the right where it is now? You do. <laughs> okay. So what we have here is 4 is greater than or equal to x squared. Okay. All right. That's how everybody usually likes it. Mm, yes, right, Kristen. Okay. All right. So what do we do to solve that? Actually, this wasn't the best way to go. You can do it this way, but this might lead you to an error. And we don't like errors, do we? So let me go back and change this slightly. In fact, change it back to where it was before. I think the better way to do this one is to take it as is, but then the reason you're wanting to set it equal to zero is so you can solve it, right? Well, what, how do you solve a quadratic if it's equal to zero? You what? What's the F word? Factor it, okay? And how do you factor it? Is that factorable? That's the issue. Is that factorable? Yay or nay? Yes, how? Say again, a little louder. I hear someone say something. Did I hear a two? Say yes. Two. Say again. Okay, two and two. What's the sign of the those two terms? One's negative and one's positive. Okay, I feel like a dentist up here. Okay, and x and x. Very good. Now, this still isn't an intuitively obvious problem, but hopefully it's a little clearer now. Here we have two entities multiplied together, and they both, the product has to be positive. What does that tell you about those two entities? If the product is positive, what does that tell you about the entities? They're what? Okay. All right. This says they've got to be positive. A product of two things have to be positive. What does that tell you about these two things? They have to have the same signs. So either both are positive or both are negative. So we have two different conditions we have to look for now. Either 2 minus x is greater than or equal to 0, and 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 0. That's a possibility. Or 2 minus x. Yeah, I can't write. Okay. Yeah, I can't erase either. That is not erasing. Well, it's going to stay there then. Okay. Okay. 2 minus, heck, now it goes away, is less than or equal to 0. And 2 plus x is less than or equal to 0. Now, this gets a little tedious, I admit, but it's pretty straightforward. Okay. The only way the product of those two can be positive is either if both are positive or both are negative. And that's what we said there, right? It must be. So let's solve that first equation here. Can anyone do that for me? And uh, Jake's technique might work well here or another. Say again. Subtract two from both sides. He's using another technique that works. And what does that give us? 
These add to zero. I'll do that. Negative x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But I don't want negative x. I want x. So how do I make that x? Yeah, I hear. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, like negative 1 that we have to do here, that makes this one x is less than or equal to negative 2. Is that right? Yeah, I believe that's right. Okay. And at the same time, you got over here, subtract 2 from both sides. No, 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 that's a positive 2. Less than or equal to positive 2 because we divided or multiplied both sides by, I forgot to multiply the other side. Okay, minus 2, and that leaves x is greater than or equal to negative 2. All right. Now, if y'all are used to these things, you might be perfectly happy with this just as it is. However, some people like it a little more visual. And I kind of do sometimes. Okay. Let's draw a number line here and put a zero in the middle. One, two, three, four. And negative one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, what does this tell you? Negative, I'm sorry, there it is. X is less than or equal to two. That means you're right here. And anywhere on this side of it, right? And at the same time, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. There is your domain. Between plus 2, minus 2, and plus 2. Minus 2 and plus 2. Okay? That's your domain for that one. All right? So now we have the domain for g of x. This is only for g of x. We haven't even gotten to the real problem here. Okay? Now, on the other hand, if this is true... You want to do the same thing? Subtract 2 from both sides. Okay. Is that what you want? Of course you do. Okay. And that gives you minus x is less than or equal to negative 2. And when we multiply or divide that, that's going to be x is greater than or equal to 2. And over here, we'll subtract 2 from both sides. And that gives us yeah, x is less than or equal to minus 2. Now, if we tried to do that on our number line, let's do it in a different color. What color do you want? Blue, okay? Light or dark? Light, okay? So here, x is greater than or equal to 2. That would be all x is that way, wouldn't it? And at the same time, we're requiring x to be less than or equal to minus 2. Is that ever going to happen? No, they have nothing in common. These are way out here. The others are way down there. There's nothing in common there. So we must go with the first case, that we're between minus 2 and 2. So there's your domain here. All that was just to find your domain of G. And we did it. Congratulations. Okay, way to go. Okay. All that to give us, sorry, I have to erase because I don't have enough room. You don't have to erase. All right, so what did that give us? Our domain for G is all X's minus 2 less than or equal to X less than or equal to 2. Or you could say brackets, you know, minus 2 to 2, you know, any way you want to express that. All right, we got that part done. Now before we can do either F or, you know, the quotient functions, we have to find what is the common domain here between F, which is all X is greater than or equal to 0, and G, which is all X is between minus 2 and 2. What's your common domain? 0 to 2. So the common domain for both of these is 0 to 2. I'm going to write it like that. It's a lot easier to write. You understand what I mean?
zero to two. That's the only place we could go with this problem. Either one of these. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What about it? You want me to draw it on a graph? Yeah, you could think of it that way. You could think of it, you know, the number line, zero to two, everything in between, nothing outside of it. Yeah. That's what that means. That's what that stands for. Very good. I like to think of it that way, too. All right. So that is the common domain for these two functions. And we haven't even gotten to the problem yet. Well, let's do f divided by g. What do you think that would be? f divided by g of x. How do we define that? Okay, f of x divided by g of x. You got me in trouble before, so yeah, okay, so all right, skipping this up here. So that would be f of x square root of x over square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, what else do we have to take in mind once we do the division? Anything? What else do we have to take into consideration? The bottom number now can't be zero. Before, it had to be greater than or equal to zero, or no, between zero and two, but now we say that the denominator cannot be zero. Well, guess what that wipes out? The two. Okay, everybody see this? The two gets wiped out here because if you put x equal two in there, you, 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 that's undefined. So the answer here is still including zero and up to two, but now can't include the two. The two is excluded from the answer. Do you see that? No? Is there another or is that just on my copy? No. Okay. All right. Now remember when we did this, we said x has to be greater than or equal to zero. This part. Over here, after all that mess, we had x was between minus 2 and 2. The common domain here is between 0 and 2. Starting at 0, including 0, up to positive 2. The minus 2 can't do it because that doesn't fit here. So there's our domain for the common, for the 2. Got it? Okay. Now when we divide them, excuse me, when we divide these, now we also have an additional requirement the denominator cannot equal zero. You can never divide by zero. Well, what is it to make that denominator zero? X equal two, right? Because if you put four minus four squared, I mean two squared, that would be four minus four, zero. Got to exclude that one. So now we can't include the two, we have to exclude it. Okay? Yeah. Um, so you put the parentheses instead of the Yes, right. The bracket means you include the, the endpoint. This includes a zero, that includes a two. This includes a zero, it has to exclude the two, so the parentheses mean oh, not counting the two. I just thought I saw, I didn't know what this was yeah. It means you get right up to the two, but not quite there. Okay. okay. 1.9999999999 would be okay, but not two. Okay. Yeah. Before, two would be fine. Okay. Now, I love walking around all this. Okay, let's do g divided by f of x. First, tell me what that's defined to be. Help me, help me. g of x divided by f of x, and that would be, that would be the square root of 4 minus x squared divided by square root of x, okay? Now, are we hunky-dory with our first domain? Zero to two inclusive? Are y'all ever hunky-dory? Okay, no fun. Okay. All right. What do we mean by that? I mean, uh, are you okay with that? What now do we have to exclude? You can't have x equals zero because square root of zero is zero. That's in the denominator, so how do we adjust for that? Parentheses in front of the zero, and it's perfectly okay to have a two there. So we put the bracket there. Does that make sense? Sure, okay, yeah. 
Why? Because you can't divide by zero. So you can't include the zero in the domain anymore. Okay, it was included in the common domain, so you could have added those functions together, subtracted the functions, multiplied the functions, doesn't matter, and you could have kept this domain right here. But once you divide, you have to throw out anything that makes that denominator zero. And that's what we did. First one, and then the other. Okay. Does that make sense? And I think they got it right in the book. Good for them. Okay. Now, they didn't have us evaluate it anywhere. Thank you very much. Okay, but uh, we've got that done. Any questions on arithmetic combinations of functions? You have to keep in mind what the domains are, common domains, and then when you're dividing, also anything, exclude anything that makes the denominator zero. What's that? I can't hear you. Say again. Uh, arithmetic, meaning arithmetic, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Those th four arithmetic operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. The first one was adding, the next one we already erased was subtracting, then we had a multiplication, this is two divisions. So those are your arithmetic combinations of functions. I threw the big word in there. So, sorry. Okay. Any questions? Did that answer, or did you want to know more than that? Okay. All right. Now for the new part. Okay. Now i got to scroll through the original problem. Okay. Now we're going to do the composition of functions. Okay. Another way of combining two functions together <laughs> to form a new function is called a composition of one with the other. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. A composition of one with the other. So let's take, for example, f of x is equal to x squared. Nice squaring function. g of x is x plus 1. Okay, here's a definition. Okay. The composition of f with g, this is what it means. The composition of f with g is you do f of g of x. Okay? And what does that mean? That means you start with the f, and then inside the parentheses, you put what g is. So it's f of x plus 1. Well, what does the f function tell you to do with what's inside the parentheses? What does the f function tell you to do? Square it. So this time, we square x plus 1, and x plus 1 squared. There's your composition of f. With G. Okay? Now, the this is denoted as F circle G, which means F composed of G. Now, some of you might think that means fog, and this is foggy, and you don't understand what it's talking about. But that is beside the point. Okay. Can you see from over there? Okay. All right. Good deal. Okay. And it reads F composed of G. And when you read this, think this. Okay? Think that every time, that will help you get the order right. Okay? So here's the definition of the composition of two functions. Composition of two functions, f with the function g, is f composed with g of x, which is f of g of x. Always. So here's, here's my little way of thinking of this. I think of that little circle as being of. Okay? Standing for of. O for of. F of G of X. Okay? That's what that means. So if you write that down first, you usually get it at least started right. The domain, okay, here is a, always the domains give us problems, don't they? Okay? And here's where it does. The domain of this is a set of all X's. Where does X start? This starts here, G of X. So it has to be in the domain of G, okay, but not just there. Whatever the output of this is, the range of this, has to be in the domain of f. Okay? So if there were any limitations there, you sort of have to think through it twice. What will g of x, what will that allow? Okay? And then its output is what's the input for f. Okay? So here's how they picture this. This is called a mapping illustration of a function. 
Here are your X's here, this blob of X's. That's your domain of G. So you operate on G, on X, on this domain with G, and that gives you the range of G. And there's your G of X, which are your Y values, your output values. Okay, then F is operating on that. So you take the output from G, and it has to be in the domain of F, and then you get alpha G of X, or the original composition goes straight from this X to that, okay? But it has to have all these requirements built together. So it looks a little complicated. In reality, it's pretty straightforward, okay? Fairly straightforward, and I'm going to trash everything here. All right, so let's do an example. Here's the f of x. f of x is x plus 2. g of x is 4 minus x squared. Find the following. What does f circle g of x mean? How is that defined? Say again. f of g of x close close. That's what it means. That's what f composed with g means. f of g of x. Okay, so what do we put first? Always go with the inside first. So leave the F alone, and G of X is what? 4 minus X squared, okay? Right? Now, what does the F function tell you to do with what's inside the parentheses? Say again? Yeah, what does F tell you to do? Whatever is inside here? Add 2 to it. Right? So what's inside there? 4 minus x squared. And do what? Add 2 to it. I didn't need the parentheses even front, did I? Okay. So what is that? Negative x squared plus 6. Okay? Or 6 minus x squared. I don't care which order you do. He likes to put that. I all right, now, let's do, let's make sure they got it right. Yeah, good deal. Now, let's do G circle alpha of X. What does that define to be? Help me. G of F of X. And what do we fill in first? The inside. So write down the G. We'll get back to that later. What is your F of X? X plus 2. Okay, and what does G tell you to do with what's inside the parentheses? Okay, you start with the number 4, and then you subtract what's inside the parentheses squared. So what's inside the parentheses? X plus 2 squared. Right? Everybody follow that. All right. Now, how do we do that? This will be 4 minus, I'm going to put parentheses here. How do you square a binomial? Say again. Say again. Foil it. Okay, you can write it off to the side and foil it. Let's do that. X plus 2 times X plus 2. Okay. Foil that, and what do you get? X squared plus 4x, plus 2x, plus 2x is 4x. You see what we did there? The outers and the inners are the same. Plus 2x, plus 4x, uh, plus 2x, that gives you plus 4x. And then finally, the last, plus 4. Okay. Now, clear your parentheses and what do you have? 4 minus x squared minus 4x minus 4. And what does that give you? Negative x squared minus 4x. Got it, because the 4s add to 0. Very good. That's your g of alpha of x. Notice here, folks, alpha of g of x, g of f of x, usually not the same thing. Most of the time, not the same thing. So composition of two functions <laughs> is not commutative. Adding two functions, yeah, it doesn't matter which order you add them. Multiplying two functions, it doesn't matter what order you add them. Multiply. Subtraction, you can't. Subtraction is not commutative. 
and division is not commuted. We saw that in those two examples. Okay? Composition function generally is not commuted. There are certain instances where it will commute, and those are pretty important, and we'll get to those a little bit later. But in general, they're not commuted. Okay? Now, what is this asking for? Yes. G, let's see. All right. Well, I, I, I'm going to do it the way you said. G of F of, why am I writing that again? Okay. All right. Let's just plug it in. Okay. <laughs> That's easier. That's what you said to do. And that would be what we had here minus a negative 2 squared. Minus 4 times a negative 2. That's what we would do. Just plug in for negative 2 what we had for our x down there. I guess that's what I should have done. Let me go down here and this is g composed with f of x. Okay. If I wrote that, then this part is just taking everywhere you see an x down there, put a negative 2 in its place. All right? And what will that give us? Say again, negative 4 plus 8, and that gives you 4. Excellent. Excellent. Now, there's another thing you can do, whichever is easier. You could have done this this way. That was g of f of negative 2. Okay? What's f of negative 2? Zero. Okay, do you see that? When you put negative 2 in for L, x, you get negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And what's g of 0? 4. Either way you want to do it. Okay? If you want to plug and chug or chug and plug, it doesn't matter. They work both ways. Make sense? Good deal. All right. <coughs> There is a checkpoint after every example. Please do the checkpoints, okay? Shortly after you leave class. Let's see how they did it, okay? Uh, do I need to leave this up there a little bit longer? Anybody? Okay. Let's see how they did it. You're going to see it again. The composition of F with G is defined as F of G of X. Okay, that's the definition. And then you plug in the innermost first. G of X is 4 minus X squared. So you operate with F on 4 minus X squared. Okay? Well, what does F tell you to do? Take whatever's in the parentheses, X, and add 2 to it. Well, here what's in parentheses is 4 minus X squared. So it's 4 minus X squared plus 2. Does everybody see that? That's what a function tells you to do. Whatever the argument is there, you do that to it. Here the argument was 4 minus x squared. So take 4 minus x squared, add 2 to it. And that simply gives you minus x squared plus 6. I would have said 6 minus x squared. It doesn't matter which order you write it. Okay? Got it? Now, notice we didn't even bother with domains, did we? Because these are polynomial functions. Anything will go in. So the real numbers coming out. The other one, yeah. No problem at all with domains. So we didn't even worry about it. So on the other hand, the G composed with F, that would be G of F of X. So the first thing you do is plug in the inside. Your F of X, they've taken it off now, but it's X plus 2. And the G function said, start with 4 and subtract whatever follows squared. So it'd be 4 minus x plus 2 squared. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's see how they did it. Yes, they put it in parentheses too. It's a good idea to do it this way, folks. The reason is it helps you, helps me keep from making sign errors. Okay. So I think it's a good idea. And that would be 
minus x squared minus 4x and then plus 4 minus 4 adds to 0. Now, note that in this case and in most cases, f of g of x is not going to be the same as g of f of x. So you can't reverse them and think you're going to get the same answer. Occasionally you do, and those are really special cases, and you'll pay attention to those. Now, using the result of part B, where we had that, we just plug in the minus 2. That would be a minus on the outside, a minus 2 on the inside, squared, minus 4 times minus 2. And y'all did it right. You first do the exponent. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negate that, you get a minus 4. And then minus 4 times minus 2 is plus 8. And that gives you 4. Okay? And then, are they going to show? No, they don't. Okay. All right. No. Okay. Any questions on that before I move on to the next thing here? Okay. They write something here they didn't in the book, but at least I don't see it. Well, yeah, I do see it later. They're going to skip example 6. Okay, that's why this. So let's go back and do example six. Okay. All right. Ah, this time we are messing with domain. Find the domain of f composed with g. Okay, for these functions, f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 and g of x is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay. It says, didn't say do anything else, it said find the domain. Okay. But, you know, we do need to do the composition because that's what it's asking for. All right. Where you start with the domain is the innermost function again, the g of x, because f of f <laughs> fog over here is what? How is that defined? f of g of x. So let's start with the inside, the g of x. What's its domain? We did one very similar to it before. What do you think the domain? Say again? Everything but threes? Huh? Okay, what's in the parentheses, uh, in the house has to be positive. Okay, so 9 minus x squared has to be positive, greater than or equal to 0. What that means is x squared can't be greater than 9, right? Because if it's greater than 9, you're going to have a negative number there, right? So x squared has to be less than or equal to 9. So x has to be between Okay, minus 3 and 3. Remember we did it before with 4s and x's or something like that. Because think about this. If x was a, someone mentioned 0, that's going to be perfectly fine. Square root of 9 is 3. That's no problem there. If it's 3, you get right up to the edge. Because if x is 3, 3 squared is 9, that gets you 0. That's going to be the last value. Anything greater than 3, you're going to be negative here, right? But, Zero isn't the lowest. You say a, a one, a negative one would be okay. Because it would be nine minus one, eight. You can take the square root of that, the irrational number. You can do all those up until negative three. Negative three will still work because nine minus negative three squared is nine. That gives you zero. Can't go any further on the negative scale. So it's between negative three and three. Does that make sense? Say again? No, brackets, because you can include it. You can include it. Okay? So those are brackets. You can't have bracket for parentheses? No, I'm kidding. All right. All right. So here's the domain here. Uh, negative 3 to 3. That's your domain of g of x. Now what we have to worry about is the output of that. When we put in something from there, square root gives you what? A positive number, right? Because it's a principal square root. 
and it basically is only going to be between uh, 0 and 3. Not going to get any different. But who cares with that? Because f is a polynomial. It'll take anything. Okay? So now you this defines what your domain is. Because f will take anything. Even if that were a number that was take, f will deal with it. No problem. But it's the g that was the limiting factor here. It keeps you between minus 3 and 3. Okay. Now, let's do this thing. Let's do the f of g of x. What would that be? What do you plug in first? Help me. Yeah, you plug in what g is. The square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay? Now what does the alpha function tell you to do with that? Right there above it. You square what's inside there, and what does that give you? When you square a square root, what do you get? What do you get? You get what's inside. 9. 9 minus x squared. A square undoes a square root. And a square root undoes a square. Okay? So that's the first part. And then you do what with that? Subtract 9 from it. There's your f function. It says square what's inside, we did, and subtract 9 from it. Well, these parentheses don't do you any good here. I put them there for emphasis sake. But let's go on and take them out. Okay, and what does that give you? Minus x squared. Now, does that look like it's limited to be between minus 3 and 3? No, that looks like it'd be good anywhere. It's not because it came from this function. And you can't go outside what your domain is. Okay? That's like Mama put you in the backyard and said, you can't go past that fence, you know? And of course, you never mind. You wouldn't do that. Okay. All right. I guess by all the noise I'm hearing that we must be through with example, uh, we're through with our time. There is a checkpoint. Please do the checkpoint. And we'll start next time with... This, in example five, was the next slide, so we'll start there next time. And let me give you a few homework exercises. Don't go away mad. Just, no, okay. Do any of the, well, do number three. It's at calpchat.com. Do any of the odds, five through 11. They're all at calpchat.com. 11's at calpview.com. Do any of the odds 13 through 23, they're all at count chat, 13's at count view. Do either 25 or 27 or both, 25's at count chat, both of them's at count view. I said it wrong. Both of them are at count chat, 25's at count view. Do any of the odds 29 to 33, they're all at count chat, 33's at count view. Do any of the odds 35 to 41, they're all at count chat, 35's at count view. And we'll stop there and pick up the rest of those next time. All right. Good deal. All right. Be working on your quiz. Anyone here did not get the quiz? Okay. Yes. Okay. It's going to be when we finish chapter uh, 1.9. But get it in as sooner as you can. That way I can give you feedback. That's my opinion. something in hand, what do you do with it? Okay. Good deal. Thank you. Do I need to save all it for you? I no, I don't. Yeah. I'll sort of keep them together. I ended up grabbing two of them. That, That's all right. I only had to grab yeah. one. I'll take off one for grabbing two of them. I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. Only if you finish. You finish? Okay, well then, finish. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
No, it's fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Basically, whatever your L function is, you put it on top, divide by the G function. Okay. The domain will be, everything has to be what's common to both F and G. So, we already did that. But, now you have the additional problem, your denominator can never be zero. So, for any X that makes that G equal zero, even though it's in the domain of G, you have to exclude that too. That's what that means. Is that what you're asking about? You just never can divide by zero. Don't even try. Uh, I'll give you um, C of this. <coughs> okay. Like, because when I did G of G of X of negative 2, I noticed that I got the F of negative 2, and that seems to be G of negative 2. That, that's, that threw me right there. Okay, and there's a reason for that, because F of negative 2 is zero. is 0, and then G of 0 is I mean, so it's not g of negative 2, it's g of 4, let's see. Okay, so g of 0 gives you 4. g of 0 would give you 4. Okay, then what's that additional look like then? Okay, what they did here was doing f composed. What you have is a little rectangle, it should be that little circle. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, what that came out to be when you did g of f of x, you came out with this. So what they did here was put in the negative 2 for the x. But negative, and then negative 2 for x squared, minus 4 times negative 2. See, everywhere you had an x here, you put in a negative 2 instead. That's how you evaluate functions. See, whatever is inside the parentheses, you put, see, this is f of g of x, and f of g of two, negative 2 would be everywhere you see an x, put a negative 2. Keep everything else just like it is, but put a negative two instead of the x. Yeah. Um, what were you talking about, zero and two for um, to be included in this? Can you give me the exact question again? Zero and two. Zero and two. So I can okay. write it down. All right. I just want to write down the question again. Yeah. You said you said something about zero and two. No, you said, and I never got a chance to even write the question. So. Okay. Is this the slide set or is this? It's the, a slide set you just did. Right? Yeah. Okay. And anything that was on the slide set, you, you can't see. Right. right. Okay. Do you remember what question you gave? Yeah, it, it was one of the examples. Uh, you don't have a book? Or do you have a I e don't have a book with me right now. I have it at home. Okay. Uh, what that was, if you come over here and look, let me get something in my place here so I don't lose it. Is it, is it possibly one of the homework questions you gave? It's not a homework. It was just another example. You see, if you come and look, the... They gave example one on the slide set, but then they didn't do two, three, or four. Okay. Uh, and this is the one I think that you're talking about. Is that it? Yeah, it's page 77, example four. No, it pays like a five for nine to ten. Okay. I think both of those are in one point. Uh, six, okay. I think. Let me. No, no, they're in one point five, I believe. One point five in the book. I believe so. I might have been short for those two. Yeah. It may even be in one point four. Let me find it. Uh. Okay. Well, one may be in one, and one may be in the other. Piecewise defined function was like this one. So that was in. Uh, Does it graph? Do they graph it? Uh, they didn't graph this one. 
Let's see, to see the graph of it. Yeah, it's like a piecewise function, and then there was an increase and decrease. Right. Okay. Well, what that one was, it's something like this, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, except the, uh, the root would be at zero, zero, the very, yeah. Yeah, right except, graph. yeah, but it's over here. It's this thing shifted a little. That okay. okay. And then it's asking for where it's greater than zero. Well, where this one greater than zero is between there and there. Right? That's the only part that's above zero. So your F is your Y value. So that's what it's asking for. If you graphed it, then where is that your Y value greater than zero? That's, that's a piecewise or is that increasing? Degree? Okay, no, that was this last one. Okay, the piecewise one, when you're asked to graph that, let me see if I can find that one. Here, this is sort of one like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I do what you're saying. Yeah. Are they, are they, are they asking which one of them are greater than one? So okay, okay. This is increasing, decreasing. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, increasing, decreasing, decreasing is in uh, this one. Uh, increasing, decreasing, like this, 1.5. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like this. And then this one is, what do you call this? You call this piecewise? Uh, this, this is find where the F is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, if you that, do the graph, then where is it? See, this yeah. one, this would be negative down here. It would be positive anywhere from negative infinity to there or from here to there. Right. Uh, yeah. This one would be positive from here to here and anything past there. So that's what they're asking for. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah but, I, but I could do that if it was like one function, but this was two separate functions. Okay, but this is one function only on part of the domain. Any x less than 1. So what you have to do with that, uh, let's see if I can. Where it's like multiple, where it's like two or more, or more functions. Yeah, what, what you do, and we did like one. Like this one, maybe. Yeah, it's like that one, exactly. Here's a function here, there's a function there, there's a function there. Yeah, you exactly. just have two pieces. Okay, so you draw the minus x squared, which is basically going to look like this, It'll but a, only a going to, to one. Yeah, so it's part of a parabola. And then this one would be another parabola opening upward. Would it be an incomplete somewhere. parabola because it can't go past the one? Or yeah, yeah, it? yeah. This okay. one can't, can't even touch one. It can get right up to it. So its end is going to be a circle. Okay. This end at one will be a solid thing and it'll go on from there okay and uh as uh christian was saying when he left he said i graphed two of them yeah you almost have to graph that one that's what the problem asked for but it, it really helps to do it huh yeah i don't see no other way yeah exactly yeah all right good deal good questions by the way you have another class in here it's a good